Uh, hello, everybody. This is Alger Gordon from the Fight Dialogue Podcast. I have PFL heavyweight contender Kevin Tiller today on the show. Uh, Kevin, first and foremost, congratulations on your win. A uh, great performance that I saw last Thursday night. Uh, talk me through that moment, like in your win, and then that Kamora. Like, talk me through it. Yeah, you know, jujitsu is just a second nature thing. You know, we uh, I've been doing this for ten years. Uh, I love the sport. I love what I do. Um, so I, I knew the gr- the ground. I mean, the fight would get to the ground eventually. And I, t- I said in the interview that uh, I'll be more active off my back. I won't lay there. I just won't sit there. And uh, I think he kind of banked on me just kind of sitting there and just kind of take punches like I've done in my last two or three fights. And uh, just kind of be just, you know, real patient and try to beat me by points. But uh, I surprised him. I think I surprised everybody. And uh, I, I, I knew I felt like I knew he would get lazy. I've seen him in his other fights. And uh, he'd make a lot of mistakes on the ground. Uh, and I just capitalized off of it. All right. And uh, during your post fight interview, when we had the chance of talking, uh, you were talking about giving back to your community um, in Topeka, Kansas, and your upbringing. Uh, I wanted to touch more on that, like your initiative, initiative, like uh, as far as uh, growing up, what uh, role models did you have? I know one of them was your uh, grandfather. Were there any other positive uh, people around in your life that, that affected you, how you turned out today? Uh, my uncle, my, his name is Harrison Tiller. Uh, okay. Uncle Tony. He, that's my mom's brother, little brother. And, uh, he had a big influence on my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he took care of uh, a lot of us too. Um, so he was a, he was a good influence. Um, uh, I had a childhood friend uh, named Tasha. You know, he had all of the money, all of the the cars, the girls. Uh, so he was a big influence on me. Uh, you know, I, I just feel like there's a lot of men that came into my life that I look up to somehow, some way. Uh, but the ones that really taught me how to be a man was my granddad and, and my uncle. They taught me about uh, principles, morals, take care of my family, you know, do the best that I can. And uh, so, yeah, so I've see, I seen a lot of, you know, street stuff growing up. And, and like I say, bits and pieces of, of everything, of people that I've seen growing up and, and the drug dealers, the hustlers, uh, the kind artists, um, in a way, I kind of looked up to all of that because that's 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 all I knew, and that's all I was around. You know, I was around a lot of like positive stuff growing up. You know, um, um, but I'm glad that I'm here today and, and and I'm doing something positive with my life. So, not only that, um, being a as you know, you and I African American men, who's that like to be a positive remote? You know, we um we know we constantly live by stigma every day, and being a a how can I say, not actors, but like a leader in your community and inspire other young black women and uh, young black males. What, is, what does that mean to you? Because um, the words that you said um, also inspired me a lot. So it, your words had an effect on me as well. I just want to touch base on that. What does that mean to you? I mean, it means a lot to me because like I say, growing up, um, I didn't have we. I, I had role models, but they wasn't always positive role models, and so I want to be the man that I was missing, you know, growing up. Um, um, so, for me to be uh, a young black man in the way that 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 I dress, you know, I don't wear suits. I mean, I don't sag and wear you know big clothes or nothing like that. But mm-hmm. the, the the kids will look up to me more when I got my white tee and my my expensive Nikes on, you know. They they'll relate to me more. Is what I'm trying to say. They will relate to me more. And uh, mm-hmm. like I said, this is the upbringing that I that that I came up in, and uh, you know, these kids look up to me now. So for them to see uh, somebody do, that come from where they come from, and that's positive, and you know, really trying to give back to my community, and I really ain't even got started yet, man. It's so much that I want to do, you know, with the years to come, but. Uh, just to being, like I say, a young black man, uh, uh, well-spoken. Um, I speak my mind on a lot of things, um, and I want them to understand that 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 you know, don't be silenced. You know what I mean? You can, uh, you can don't be silenced. You can do whatever it is that you want to do in your life. You just got to work hard. And when they look at me, they're like, okay, well, you know, Mr. Tiller don't have to sell dope. He didn't sell dope to get that car. He didn't sell dope to get those Nikes. He didn't have to rob nobody to get uh, uh, the this or get that you know he 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 worked hard at his dream he stuck with it he had his ups and his downs and i can do it too so i'm giving that positive uh not just you know not just the black kids but 
all kids, but um, you know, mm-hmm. where I'm at, it's you know, 90%, you know, black people. So mm-hmm. I am happy that I can be a role model to those, to my kind, to my people. Um, but I feel like everybody can learn from me and not just black people, Mexicans, whites, but you know, everybody. So, uh, so it's important that, 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 that I do what I do so they can mm-hmm. look up to me and they can see a positive role model doing good things. All right. That's cool. And, uh, I know you talked to me that growing up, you had a, had a community center, uh, in your neighborhood. Uh, talk to me about that. Uh, it's like playing basketball with the kids, interacting, and, uh, keeping them out of trouble. Uh, this, this very good initiative. Like I, and do you plan on building your own or probably investing in that community center that you grew up in? Uh, I live in Kansas City, Kansas right now. Yeah. Um, that would be crazy mm-hmm. for me to uh, uh, be able to like get that, you know, one day. Um, but I, I, I kind of want to set up in mm-hmm. Kansas City, Kansas first. But uh, the community center for me was my second home. Sometimes it was my first home because my mom worked a lot. Right after mm-hmm. school, I would go there. It's about eight or nine o'clock at night. And... Uh, you know, when we couldn't play basketball, we was finding hood rat shit to do. You know, we was we was picking <laughs> up of uh, like when we wanted to go play basketball, it was literally basketball. That's all we wanted to do was kids. Then they had the workout, they had the punching bag back there in the gym. So it just kept us all out of trouble. So when they started charging for us to go to the gym, a lot of times they only charging a dollar, but that's hard coming from a kid, you know, mommy got no money, daddy's not around, taking care of four kids. That dollar, every time I want to play basketball every day, that, you know, that became rough. My mama couldn't afford that. And so, uh, so we started looking, we started doing bad things, you know, we just started stealing bikes, you know, uh, 14, 15 years old, started selling drugs. Uh, um, but Central Park saved me so much in ways that that's what's that's what's called Central Park in Topeka, Kansas. They saved me so much and not just me, a lot of the guys that, that, you know, came up behind me, before me, because throughout the summer, the gym is open for free. I think Monday through Saturday or Tuesday through Saturday, something like that. And, you know, we can be in there all day shooting. And, and, and. so it just saved me, kept me out of a lot of trouble. But I also kind of took a lot of trouble there. Uh, <laughs> I beat up a lot of people there. Uh, I had oh, guns man. put out on me there. I, I then sent people to the hospital from there. So I, I don't, I mean... You know, I don't claim to be perfect or nothing. I got, I got a, I got a rough upbringing, a rough past, but Central Park did help me, regardless of all the things that the good and the bad that came through there. Overall, it helped me, and so I want to be able to get that back to my community. I want to be able to uh, own a barbershop because I know how important it is to, for a man to have a haircut, uh, and then I want a community center, um, and not just to play basketball at, but like actually a learning center too. I want to be able to teach kids. Uh, like one day, I want to be able to open my garage in my community center and see, uh, bring in five cars. I'm like, okay, well, we teaching the boys how to change brakes today, you know, do oil changes. And then, okay, so next week, we're going to have a nail tech come in. We're going to teach, you know, young girls how to do nails. And then we're going to, because we need jobs that's that's going to follow us for the rest of our lives, you know. And yes. Because in, in five, ten years, it ain't going to be easy to get a job at Walmart. You know, exactly. people rely on those things. It's not going to be easy to get a job at McDonald's because the robots is taking over everything. And so, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you go in there, you don't even talk to nobody no more. You just, you, you really not. Shit on there. Yeah, <laughs> man, that's putting somebody out of job worldwide, though. Millions of people out of jobs. And so, I would like to teach people how to be their own bosses. And, and uh, I would like to do all of that through my community center, not just let them play basketball. And, um, uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of my goal. That's just a small side of it. I got a lot. That's that's a whole nother conversation, but that's just a little bit of it, man. All right, no, that's that's great to hear, man. Uh, I feel like we need more of that teaching kids skills because not enough kids have skills. You know, right. we're taught to go to college, get a degree, and work in a corporate job, but a lot of people need to learn skill. Like uh, back then, my mom's era, they had wood shop. Uh, uh, different types of class that helped them into the real world and you know because my mom she's originally from Antigua she's from the island so they had um, all that stuff growing up and to see that many kids don't know skills was just it kind of it kind of sucks because you have to you're, you're under this stigma that you need to do this and do that instead of learning quality things right right a lot of the times it's um you know go get the nine to five job go work 
go work for 40 years so they can give you twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a month, you know, to the day that you die. And then if you're in a nursing home and the nursing home will take all thirteen hundred dollars, you know, you you just working to die. I don't want to work to die. You know, I want to travel the world. I want, to, I want my kids to travel the world. The kids coming up behind me, I want them to travel the world. I want them to want them to have financial freedom. Uh, and when I speak on these things, I'm learning too, man. I'm honestly learning. I'm learning this shit at the age of 28, you know, 27, 26. I'm, I'm, I'm actually just an open book. And, and like I said, I just really want to get back to my community. So, uh, so in order to get back to them, I got to, I got to do all the studying that I can and, and learn the game. All right. Uh, um, so at your, at your uh, fight, obviously your family was there. Um, your kids and your mom. And I see your mom was one of your biggest inspirations for you today. Uh, going through, what made you fall of MMA? And going through just mixed martial arts in general, how did your mom feel about it, you doing that? <laughs> when I had my first fight, my mom was living in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> and so she was she didn't get to see my fight, but they put her on a, mm-hmm. uh, a uh, they called her. You know, we didn't have all the video called uh, 10 mm-hmm. years ago. But they caught her on the phone, and she was just kind of yeah, like listening yeah. to everybody yell and stuff. And I won in the second round. Mm-hmm. And I, I trained for only 23 days before my first MMA fight. You know, what the mm-hmm. hell the triangle choke was. I walked into the gym, trained for 23 days. I beat a guy that was 6-0. and uh, He was a stand-up guy, a big Samoan guy. Uh, they were weighing like 200 pounds, something like that. And, uh, yeah, I beat him. I beat him. And uh, right then and there in that feeling, I was. I remember I got hit with an uppercut. I was on the ropes, and he hit me with an uppercut. And I thought, I was like, if I lose this fight, I will never fight again. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I remember that like it was yesterday, man. Because I was literally on the ropes and he had a like, head into my chin and he threw a hard uppercut. I never stumbled. I, I felt I never was rocked, wobbly or nothing. I just, it's just, okay, I got hit. You know what I mean? But I'm like, if I lose this fight, I will never fucking fight ever again. <laughs> and I ended up winning in the second round, beat him up really bad and. uh Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but that that was the beginning of my career, man. And my mom, she didn't know nothing about it. She didn't know if I was good or not. She was just supporting. And she moved back and surprised me for my, uh, I think my third fight, I believe it was, my second fight. And it was actually on my birthday, June 26th. And I just mm-hmm. turned 19. I just turned 19. And uh, she surprised me. And, she, and she's and been supporting ever since then. You know, and she wasn't going much long before. Uh, my first fight. She probably been going for about six months, five six months. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause that's where her uh, her ex husband is. That's where he's from, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. But yeah, man, it, uh, it's, it's been a long road for my mom and I, my sisters, and all of them. Uh, so we finally here. We finally making a little bit of money, and uh, so we'll keep the weight rolling. All right. Uh, and how did you stumble upon the PFL? Like, how did you uh, were able to join the organization? Like, how do you guys uh, come cross paths? Uh, my manager is the one, that, uh, Brian Butler. Shout out to Brian Butler. He's the one that uh, hit me up and he's like, "Hey, you want to make a million dollars?" And I'm like, 300 pounds, almost fat, out of shape, coming off of mm-hmm. Achilles tear. I ain't did shit. I'm like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. when?" He was like, "In like three and a half weeks." I was like, "Fuck." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I just got out. I got off the couch that day. I remember going to hit the bag. And I hit the back for about a minute and a half. And I was so, so tired. And then, uh, <laughs> and I left. I was like, fuck this, man, I can't fight. And so he sent me the contract. And I seen how much money I was making. I think it was the same day or the next day, something like that. I see how much money I was making. And I was like, oh, let's get back to the gym. <laughs> 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 and I went back to the gym, man. I, I stuck it out for about an hour. And then uh, when the fight came, I got the first, you know, first round knockout. And that kind of put me on the map. But, um, yeah, my manager, you know, he's a good manager. Brian Butler, sucker punch ENT. Uh, he he didn't want to got me the, the the contract. And last year, we just, you know, kept the ball rolling. But I actually want to give a shout-out to Jesse Finney because Jesse Finney was the one that actually gave me my first heavyweight fight on Shamrock FC. And that's in St. Louis, and that's in Kansas City, Kansas. So mm-hmm. shout-out to Jesse Finney. I feel like I'm here because of him. Cause nobody wanted to give me a heavyweight fight because I was missing weight at 205 and a lot of guys said I was too small because I was getting like 207 208 and a lot of guys said I was too small for heavyweight and then um but the whole Achilles tear thing happened but he gave me my first fight so thank you Jesse Finney I appreciate that man 
All right, shout out to Jesse. Um, as of course, you just fit, came off a fight, and you got. I know you guys had to start training again soon. I have a little layoff. You're not fighting till August. Right. Um, when you guys plan to start training again? We already started. I started Sunday. I went to go spar Sunday, right. uh, and then my coach and I, uh, Professor Claudio Matos, um, we went over my because I was upset that I didn't finish the Kamora sooner. And we just start going over little things and critiquing the little things that I did wrong. And we sat there for about an hour and just working on jujitsu. I did about four or five rounds of sparring, five minute rounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I get about it. I'm, I'm already back in training. I ain't taking no time off. All right. Man. I can't wait to see you perform again at PFL 6 for sure. I will be there in attendance. And uh, don't want to hold anything too much more of your time, but it was nice talking to you, interviewing you, and also get to know who you are in person level um great opportunity and i uh, wish you nothing but the best in the pfl in the tournament and see you come out victorious all right man i sure do appreciate it thank you for having me